Let's get our guy, John Kimball, president of the uh, illustrious RSL Real Salt Lake. John, good to meet you. Welcome to the program, man. Hey, thanks so much, you guys. I appreciate you guys having me on today. Yeah, and you know, John, the funny thing is, we have so many people who are like, you guys need to do RSL content. You guys have to talk about <laughs> RSL. No, I'm just, I'm curious. You guys have had so much change in whether it's everything you went through with the ownership change and now the TV change. How's life for you at RSL and in MLS? You know, it's it's great. Honestly, right now, it's been a tough stretch, couple couple of tough tough games in the last couple of weeks. But overall, uh, things are fantastic. I just got back yesterday from our Board of Governors meeting uh, down in Cupertino, California, uh, and the owners went on a big tour of the Apple uh, headquarters. Uh, you know, the whole media deal has been fantastic to be uh, standing next to the biggest media company in the world uh, is just a fantastic opportunity for our league, for our team, uh, for the trajectory of, of soccer and football in America. And I'm, I'm just really excited about where we're headed leading up to World Cup in 2026. So a lot of, a lot of amazing things happening for us right now. Well, let's talk about your TV deal because I, I will tell you, for one, here's my struggle with, with the Apple TV situation. I miss David James on TV. And I miss, I miss the radio call with Bill. And I, I just was so fond of that setup. Yeah. And I miss the local broadcaster. And we, you know, we've been sitting here for six weeks talking about the Pac-12 deal. Yeah. Let me ask you straight away, like, how has life been being a business partner with Apple TV and how has it impacted the way that you guys do business? You know, straight up, we, we just had fantastic representation here locally. We were one of the top five markets uh, for viewership and, um, you know, the partnerships that we had with KU TV and KSL and, and with David James and Bill Riley and it was just one of the best in the league, quite honestly. So for us, you know, it, it was a tough transition in the sense that we knew we were walking away from that. Uh, you know, one of the, the things that's unique that a lot of people don't know or understand is on uh, Apple Plus, on the MLS channel, you can actually listen to David James call the game live. Uh, there's an option for you to click and listen to the local broadcast, which was one of the things that we were very excited of because we, to your point, we know that there's a lot of fans that that's really important to. So we're encouraging people to, to obviously watch the games, but to listen to the local broadcast and it's a transition. And, and I think you're going to see a lot of leagues and a lot of sports go through this transition uh, here in the near future. And one of the things I was most worried about was, are they going to call the games fairly? And, you know, for a small market, sometimes we don't get the love that some of the big markets get with some of the, the big broadcasting uh, talent. Uh, but I, I have to admit, I've been very pleased and, and, and really, quite honestly, surprised that they've done such a, a great job and, and calling the games fairly and being very educated about our club and what's important to us uh, in Utah. And I think they're doing a great job. And, and like I said, I do think it's the wave of the future. I think you're going to see a lot of other sports go this direction. And uh, the MLS is just ahead of the game. And, and we're learning some things, I think, for some other uh, leagues at this point. But uh, again, there's nobody I'd rather be standing next to than Apple at this point. Yeah, and I, I think the, the interesting thing is, for me anyways, what's the feedback been from your fans? Because I, I am one of the people who I'm a casual RSL supporter. Like I'm a huge fan of Chelsea football club. I'm a huge premier league guy. So the way that soccer is presented on television in this country is incredibly important to me yeah. because I probably only go to a match or two every five years being a yeah. Chelsea fan in London. Right. So I'm curious for me, it hasn't been a great experience, but I wonder what have your season ticket holders and what have RSL fans given you guys as a club feedback on the Apple TV deal? You know, the, 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 the production equipment that they're using is, is some of the highest quality that's out there. So I think as far as the quality goes and the presentation of the game, uh, it's up to Apple's, uh, you know, bar that they set. And, and I think it's been high. And in fairness, a lot of our fans are saying the same thing you're saying. 
that they're they're missing the local broadcast. Again, we're trying to get the word out that you can hear the local broadcast. Um, but you know, Dunny uh, is is uh, he was probably one of our biggest critics, quite honestly, <laughs> and was pretty tough on us. Uh, but also is a huge advocate uh, of our club, and uh, we're so proud of him and what he's doing with Apple. And so, yeah, we absolutely, thats that's been the feedback that we missed that local broadcast. Uh, but this is a transition year, and I think, you know, I think people will warm up to it. Do you do you think about the branding? Do you think about the lo the local feel? Because I think when you have a local TV deal, one of the things that I'm curious about, A, was it a revenue stream for you guys on that local TV deal? And has Apple, have you gotten close? Because I think quite honestly, in this year one, and by the way, thank you for saying that because I think people want instant results right now. We want the very best and all the money today, yeah. right? And that's, I just don't think that's, that's I don't think that's realistic is the right yeah. word. But yeah. it was your local TV deal a revenue stream for you guys? And have you had to be creative in, in replacing that part of your, of your branding? Yeah, I mean, it was our biggest advertisement, absolutely no doubt. To have our game broadcast, you know, essentially for free over the air uh, was a fantastic, fantastic uh, marketing tool for us. Uh, and, and obviously now with the subscription, uh, you know, initially the, the, those numbers go down and we hope that they'll get back to where they were in the future. Uh, so essentially on that side, but then again, you look at the marketing that Apple's putting behind it. If you have an Apple device, you literally can't pick up your phone and look at Apple news or anything Apple associated and not see something about the MLS. And so, again, that's good for all of us. That's good for our league. That's good for our future. And it, again, it's a transition. You know, are there things that are better? Are there things that are worse? I think there's certainly trade offs across the board. Apple's commitment to us financially, uh, being a single entity league, uh, it helps all of the clubs across the board. And so, um, you know, there's going to be some give and take initially, but I think in the long run, you know, what we had in the past, unfortunately, I don't believe was sustainable. And I think it had to change. And for it to change and have a partnership with Apple, again, is just the, the best of the best. And so um, I, we met just this, uh, this time yesterday, and Apple executives were, were in the room uh, commenting on their commitment and where they're going with us. And and they essentially said, we just, we don't do things halfway and we're going to make this successful. And we're very excited about how it's kicked off. And so I think there's just better things to come. And, and one of the other things that I thought was really unique is that there's been some feedback and some concerns about, you know, when you get on, you kind of see the scores of the games and, you know, we've given feedback of, Hey, you got to take the scores down because some people don't want to see the score. They want to watch the game. They've been very reactionary to the feedback that we're giving them that's coming from the fans, which, you know, a lot of times that's like trying to turn the Titanic. I mean, yes, they're listening and responding very quickly and they want it to be uh, an amazing experience uh, for their customers and, and for our league. How important is America first been to you guys? Because obviously you have a big relationship with them now. And I, I think when you look at the the naming rights and you look at the, the, it feels like a very deep woven relationship with you guys. So how important have they been to you guys? Oh, they've been fantastic. Uh, you know, in the economy now uh, to have a financial institution step up um, and, um, and partner with us uh, across, across the board. Now they're, they're stepping up and partnering with our women's team as well. The Royals, um, they're just one of the best companies I've ever worked with in my career. They're good people um, and they're just, uh, I, I can't even thank them enough as far as their support. And, and really when you have a partnership with people that you respect and that you enjoy working with, it, it just makes the scenario all that much more fun. And uh, to have Tammy and Thane and Brett and all the people that we work with there be not only just huge fans of our club, but just good, good people and good friends to work with. 
And, and one of the things I really pride our club on is getting results and being able to work with partners and then making sure that there's an ROI for them and that they're happy with our partnership. And the fact that they keep coming back and asking what else they can do is showcasing that it's working and that our fan base is stepping up. And you as a fan uh, of sports knows the affinity that is there. You will drive the extra couple miles to fill up at a gas station that supports your team because you're this type of a fan or that type of a fan, and it makes a difference. And so for us to build those type of relationships and then have our fans support those partners uh, is what it's all about. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, it's interesting, the ownership situation and the, the, you know, the kind way to put it is the darkness that came out of the Deloitte Hansen situation into now what feels like almost a best case scenario. And you, you, you had to, you, you were here before you came back. I mean, there had to be some trepidation with corporate partners and coming out of that Deloitte situation. How hard was it for you guys to leave that behind to get into new ownership and to get into even with, you know, Ryan Smith getting involved and now it's such, it feels like such a local, local team. How difficult was that transition? But more really, John, how important was it for you guys to handle that well? You know, yeah, that was a, that was a tough time for a lot of reasons. Uh, and it, it, I would say more so even COVID was, was the biggest challenge. And I will say that there were some issues, but uh, Deloitte Hansen did some remarkable things for this club in the, in the sense of building the academy and putting in some of the infrastructure. And, and when I was brought back, I, I was literally the first employee of Real Salt Lake and worked here for a number of years and then left to go work for the Utah Jazz uh, and was brought back uh, to, to help sell the club. You know, there, there was a lot of work that needed to be done um, in the sense that we, we, we had those social issues going on and then we also had COVID. And um, again, I'll go back to just having amazing partners and, and being able to connect with people that I've worked with for years uh, to go to them and say, look, we're going to do the very best we can to right this ship. We need you to step up and believe in us. And I would say, you know, for the most part, 90, 95% of our uh, business partners decided to step up and stay with us and work with us and, and wanted to see this club thrive because they knew how important a club like this and a sports entity like this is to our community. And to have Ryan and David step in and also voice that in saying that this club belongs to the community, that it is about our community, that it's healthy for us and it allows us to be, you know, one of the smaller markets to actually be considered with the top 10 markets in the country because of our sports programs and what we do, it puts Utah on the map for a lot of really positive reasons. And, and, you know, for us to kind of be at this point now uh, where we're accomplishing some, some great things on, with our sports teams um, again, I, you know, I'll, I'll never forget a story that, that was told where somebody was uh, doing business in China. And the first question they asked about was, how was the jazz doing? And so it just gives you an idea of how sports translates across the globe and, and, and how important it is, even in business, to, to, to be involved and to, to support your, your, your local sports communities and, and get behind them. And, um, and, and with that, we've had the opportunity to really grow and, and start to thrive. And as I led out talking about World Cup, that quite honestly, is going to be the culmination of, and, and I said this on another sports program the other day, I believe that will be the largest sporting event to hit the United States in the history of our country. The 2026 World Cup will be the most significant sporting event. And you can debate this and, and, and think about it, but when you look at 11 NFL stadiums being used for, you know, a, a number of weeks hosting the number one sport from around the world in our community and gathering the world to the United States. It just gives you an idea of the trajectory of our club, this league and and soccer or football in America.
couple more questions for you. Uh, John Kimball, the president at RSL, is our guest on the Monty Shield. But um, real quick, season tickets, I know that you guys are, I think you're going through a transition on the field with, with the Apple TV situation. A, how do you feel like that's impacted your season tickets? And B, now, how important is it for you guys to put a quality product on the field for a significant stretch of time now to regain that season ticket base that you guys had? And do you feel like you're on the, the route to doing that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've grown our season ticket base, a couple of thousand season ticket holders in the last year. Uh, I think Apple absolutely helps us. But as you know, you got to win. You know, you got to put a good product on the field. Um, but I will say it's a little bit different with soccer because you've got, as you know, in the EPL and, and clubs around the world, soccer tends to be a community um, asset in the sense that it is your club. And sometimes you don't win. And there's clubs in Europe that have never won. However, you know, that's their team. And they're going to back their team come win or loss. There's Netflix series. There's all sorts of stuff on TV right now about, yeah. you know, just believing in your club and in your team. And, and one of the things that I'm really proud of with our club is, is when I was involved in the beginning, we weren't winning but we were relevant and our players were known in our community and we were giving back and we were volunteering and we were showing that the community meant something. And I think that then shows the loyalty because uh, I think soccer, professional soccer players tend to be more involved in their communities than, than a lot of other professional sports. And they want to give back. They want to be involved. And I think that endears our community win or lose uh, that endears the community to, to support the club. And that's what I think is a little bit different, not only about our club, but about soccer in general. And, you know, and, and uh, again, it's, it's obviously very important to win, but I also think our season ticket holders, if, if we're showing integrity and we're showing best, best efforts on the field and we're involved in the, in the community and giving back our season ticket holders will support us. Well, and I also think it's, incredibly enjoyable to go to a match. I mean, it is, you know, coming to the field, seeing it in person, being there, you know, that just the atmosphere, like, I mean, it's a, it's a great place to bring your family. And to that end, the last question I have for you is why was it so important to have a women's team involved in the organization? And why was it an initiative for RSL and your ownership group to make sure that that got done? You know, it's interesting. You, you mentioned that because, after the new ownership was announced, um, everybody was super excited. And the next question that we were asked on a consistent basis is when is the women's team coming back? And I know that our, our ownership is very proud uh, to have the Royals coming back. And for a lot of reasons, it's the, it's the right time to do the right thing. Um, the, the women's sports in Utah is huge. Soccer in Utah, for women is huge. My daughter played and I've, I've been to so many games and, and traveled ar around the country to support her. And it's, it's one of the things that I'm most passionate about. I, I, I kind of make a joke because I love watching women's uh, soccer because they don't flop like the men do. They don't roll around 10 times when they get kicked in the shin uh, the, you know, they, they play a really clean, pure game. And we have a lot of women and men in our community that love, love the game and they want to come out. We were number two in the league for support uh, when the Royals were here. So I'm really excited about what we're going to deliver on the field with the Royals and, uh, and, and uh, how they're going to be accepted back into our community. And, and we just are, we couldn't be prouder to bring that team back and to get going next year. Well, Hey John, I know you're uh, you're a busy guy and I appreciate you coming on the show. Really nice to meet you. You and well. honestly and truly, man, congratulations on all your success. I, I, a lot of people probably don't know you. I think you're one of the most successful sports figures that we've had in the modern era of Utah sports. So congratulations on all of that, man. Really nice to talk to you. Wow, that's very kind. Thank you and really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure to meet you guys. There you go. John Kimbo, the president at Real Salt Lake. It's a good conversation. Yeah. And the one thing I'm going to take away from it is John Kimbo saying, hey, 
this is the streaming is is absolutely where sports is going. Yeah, it's the wave. Because how many times have I said on this show that streaming is exactly where sports is going? 